Yes, uh, within only six months, uh, in order to migrate 1,800 MySQL instances, uh, I will be talking about the automation tool. So it's uh, 1,800 times uh, six months. Uh, so multiplied by, excuse me, divided by six months, so it's 300. Uh, so uh, this is for MySQL DBAs and those people who require MySQL migration and uh, also uh, to people who have a certain experience in operating uh, MySQL to a certain extent. Uh, so I'll share with you how you can safely migrate MySQL. Oh, and uh, this is uh, the agenda. Uh, and I'll be talking uh, about uh, my introduction. A migration in line and uh, also upgrade helper MUH and internal operation for safety MySQL migration and I would like to uh, summarize. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am Harachi. In 2020, I was joined a line with a mid-career hire and I am a DBA of MySQL on team and I operate and also uh, develop tools uh, to make operation easy for MySQL. I have an interesting background. Uh, when I was in school, I belonged to Auto Club uh, and uh, I joined a, a competition to drive a two-ton truck fast and accurate. I became number one, which means that I am a DBA who drives the two-ton truck the best. So, I'd like to talk about uh, MySQL migration at LINE. So at LINE, uh, every year, uh, the number of MySQL has increased. And in 2022, uh, we have roughly 6,500 uh, MySQL uh, running the services. So today's topic uh, is uh, MySQL migration. Uh, and uh, from the current uh, environment uh, to a new environment, uh, we relocate MySQL and we call that migration. And when it comes to uh, relocation, I'm sure uh, you have uh, relocated from one place to the other at least once. And it's very cumbersome. Some. So MySQL migration is also cumbersome. So this uh, cumbersome uh, migration, why do we have to do this? So that's what I would like to talk about. And uh, uh, at a high level, there are two reasons. One uh, is uh, to do the operation of uh, these MySQL, also upgrading the version of MySQL. And uh, if the performance is not enough for the hardware, we scale up. And if uh, the data amount rises, uh, we do the sharding and distribute. And at line, uh, we have a private cloud called Verda, uh, and uh, we provide a MySQL platform. So making platform newer, uh, then uh, we can have common operation and utilize convenient uh, capabilities. And another reason. Uh, there is a deadline uh, of uh, migration sometimes. So MySQL 5.6, uh, it was EOL back in February of last year, and 5.7, uh, it will become EOL uh, next year in October. Uh, so we have, uh, for 5.7, uh, we have more than 3,000, so my heart is pounding, and CentOS S. Six, uh, it's EOS, and LINE also borrows a data center, and we run private cloud uh, Verda. Uh, so we have to relocate a data center as well. And if we do not make in time, and the server will be powered off. Uh, so we have to um, keep the deadline. And uh, the private cloud uh, Verda, uh, we offer a MySQL platform, uh, and uh, the old version uh, will come down as well. So we which means that we have to uh, keep uh, the deadline. So what we know now uh, is uh, by June 2023, uh, we have to migrate uh, about 1,800 uh, MySQL. So how are we going to go about migrating MySQL? So you can see the bullet points here. First of all, the new MySQL the target needs to be created uh, and then add necessary user ACL and uh, the variables uh, of uh, source MySQL uh, will be applied to uh, the destination, the target, and then uh, the source data will be exported uh, and imported uh, to the destination, the target, and then uh, we start replication. So compare all the new data. Uh, we make sure that they are in sync and under new environment. Uh, if uh, 
there is a version upgrade of MySQL, and then uh, we add uh, the same query and check the performance. And uh, then uh, we switch it over uh, to the target, and maybe we will have to do that overnight. Uh, and after switching over, if there is no problem, then uh, we will stop uh, the old uh, MySQL. So we have a lot of MySQL, uh, and uh, migration work uh, is challenging. And uh, at the same time, we have a deadline, and so which means that uh, is really a death for me. So that is why we have to uh, automate migration. And then uh, we developed a MySQL upgrade helper, MUH. So my boss said, uh, migration work. Uh, let's do it without SSH login. And uh, using this manually uh, is too risky. And uh, do the migration over a browser. And uh, also make it so that everyone uh, can migrate MySQL safely. And that is why we started to develop MUH. So MUH, what can we do? You can see an image diagram. The source is existing MySQL, and target uh, is uh, the new destination, MySQL. And uh, primary is a uh, uh, writable MySQL. And from source to target, uh, the data will be sent, and uh, we do the replication. And then uh, we e switch it to the target so that the new target uh, can be used. So you can see the architecture. The user will operate uh, through web screen. And uh, in the background, there are a lot of APIs running. Uh, and API will be able to operate uh, MySQL. And now the role of uh, respective APIs. Uh, there are a lot, uh, so I'll just show you two of them. The key is MUH API. Uh, this can uh, handle MySQL migration uh, pretty much end to end. And uh, later, I'll talk about uh, what kind of processes uh, are working. And uh, towards the end, uh, I'll talk about the switchover uh, from old to the new environment of MySQL. Uh, and uh, there, we are using a tool called Simple Switchover. So this is the history of MUH. In fact, uh, we have been running for two years in October 2020. Uh, we started to offer uh, MUH for DBA, and uh, through screen, uh, MySQL migration is now possible. So with this, uh, things became much easier. However, as I said at the beginning, the number of uh, MySQL instances continued to increase, and uh, there were many migrations that needed to be completed on a timely basis, such as uh, CentOS 6 support and data center relocation. So this created an issue that DBAs alone could not handle. That's why starting this November 2022, we started to provide a screen called MUHProd to allow developers to perform MySQL migration safely by themselves. So the challenge in providing MUH to developers is how to let them perform MySQL migration safely without DBA. So this is a challenge I would like to explain today. MH prod workflow is shown here. First, we build a new MySQL instance for the destination. At that time, the spec selection API is provided to select a new instance based on the CPU, memories, and disk sizes of the existing MySQL instance. So that's how we uh, choose the size of the new instance. And uh, when it's uh, started up, this is a registration screen. After building the destination, register the source MySQL for the source and uh, target MySQL for the destination. So if the source and target MySQL can be registered so freely, and then it will be dangerous because it will lead to data leakage. So here we are checking whether the person has the authority for both source and target MySQL. After registration, you will see a screen like this. The developer only needs to read the instructions on the screen and click the Execute button in order to perform MySQL migration from step one on the left all the way through to the last step on the right. And these are respective steps, as you can see. 
The first is the add user ACL. This is to add necessary user ACL. And the next is the inspection. Uh, we will verify if old and the new MySQL migration is possible. This uh, next is set variables. So the variables or parameters of MySQL in the old environment are to be applied to the target side and uh, prepare data import. And uh, um, in the position base, if replication of uh, a source MySQL is a positive position base, and you can do that, or if, uh, if it is a GTID base, and then you will uh, change the target to GTID base. And the next is data import. So transport the data from the source to the target MySQL. So when it's done, we will check if the table, column, metadata matches between the source and the target. And start replication from the source to target. You start replication. And here, you can synchronize the data. So with data comparison, you can check if the data of source and target match with one another. And finally, migration. Switch writing from the application from source MySQL to target MySQL. Lastly, we enable HA. This enables high availability on the target side or stops MySQL on the source side. So all the developers have to do is just to click the button on screen to perform the entire migration process. So that's MUH Prod. Now, so for safe MySQL migration, how did we implement those processes? First, inspection, I like to explain. This is the step. The purpose of inspection is to verify that there is no risk of MySQL migration on the source and the target and check the settings of each MySQL. And if there is a problem here, and then migration is not possible, so you will have to consult with us DBAs. So it is shown on this diagram, the MUH API validates MySQL for the source and target, respectively. And I will explain what is uh, validated. So first, uh, uh, we will check if there are any table without primary key, because if there is no PK primary key, the replication in the row base will be delayed. So then we will check if there are tables that are not the uh, InnoDB tables. For example, if there is any my isum used, basically we use uh, InnoDB. We check if uh, ACL is on the target side, uh, MySQL. That's what we check. Next. So if there is any user with a super authority, we have to delete it. That's what we prompt. Next, lowercase table names. This is uh, within the MySQL. It is related to large cap and small cap. If there is any difference between the source and target, it is no good. And for full text search parameter for the search between the source and target, whether uh, there is a match or not, we will check that. And next is time zone, whether it is correct and matching or not. And next is uh, uh, if the source is uh, uh, new my SQL version compared with the target, and then there is the uh, reserved words. Therefore, we will check whether the um, uh, table name and the column names are used or not. For the target side, GTID mode on is the norm. So on the source, we will check whether there is no GTID uh, violation query or not. So that's what we did with the inspection. Set the variable. Next uh, is set variables. This is the step. 
So set variables, uh, the purpose is uh, from source, measure uh, MySQL variables, the parameters uh, will be applied to target MySQL as they are. And by doing so, even after migration to target, without changing uh, parameters, uh, there will not be any impact uh, on SQL behavior. So on the diagram, uh, MUH API based on source variables uh, will change uh, the target variables. Uh, so if uh, set global cannot be applied, then it will be entered uh, into my conf uh, and restart uh, my SQL so we can apply. So the variables uh, that will be migrated, as you can see, after migration, uh, we, the purpose is uh, not to change the behavior of my SQL. SQL mold character set server, collation server, uh, these are test strings and explicit defaults for a timestamp. Uh, so this will impact the default value of timestamp type and max connections after migration. Uh, of course, if we have few max connections, that will be a problem. Lock wait timeout, uh, in ODB lock wait timeout. Uh, if uh, the time until timeout changes, it will be a problem. So up to this point uh, was uh, were set variables. Now, data export import. So migrating the data. So this is the step. So the diagram, as you can see, uh, from uh, source replica, MUH API uses uh, my dumper data to export the data, uh, and using my loader, uh, import uh, the data to target primary. And uh, in data export and import, uh, areas to pay attention to are as follows. In migrating from source to target, uh, sometimes upgrade of, of the version of MySQL uh, will be conducted. So in that case, logical BU uh, should be used. And uh, also, with uh, my dumper and my loader, uh, we e use creativity so that uh, source and target MySQL will not be high loaded, and also that uh, target MySQL will not be disk full. I'll be explaining about this. So first of all, my dumper. The reason why we use this, uh, this is an open source system, but the reason we selected my dumper is as follows. So in order to get a logical backup, uh, we can do it parallelly. So it's faster than a MySQL dump. And because it could be executed parallelly, dump loading a utility of MySQL shell uh, exists. Uh, and when we developed MUH, um, MySQL 5.6 uh, did not support. So that is why we used uh, my dumper. And the areas uh, where we became creative was that uh, to avoid high load of source target MySQL, uh, depending on the number of CPUs, uh, we change a, the number of threads uh, for the process. And since we're using logical BU uh, on the target MySQL side, um, there will be a binary log written in import, uh, so which means that we have to purge the binary log. And uh, we keep on sending the query. So before import, uh, we turn off the query log uh, and uh, avoid using too much uh, disk space. So that was about uh, export and import of data. And next uh, is metadata check. This is the step here. Like inspection, it's similar to inspection, but uh, we have comparison of schema table column of source and target of MySQL, and uh, we confirm uh, whether there is uh, no difference. And the items that we check uh, from information schema, we get uh, the result and we compare between source and target. Uh, and also schema table view trigger routine events, uh, we check uh, whether uh, these are in sync. And regarding the table, furthermore, we use uh, this kind of query. So oh, checking index partition, column, and foreign key, whether they are in sync as well. So up to this point uh, was a metadata check. And now uh, moving on to data comparison. This is a step. So 
The purpose of data comparison uh, is uh, to compare the data between source and target. And if there are differences, uh, we will not be able to migrate uh, as they are. So we make sure at this point. When it comes to data comparison, uh, it's an important process. However, doing it manually is an awful lot of work. So we have automated this process. So let me explain how data comparison works. Uh, there are two steps. First, take the snapshot and uh, make sure that we can get the same value between source and target and then compare data. First of all, let me explain about snapshot. Like on the diagram, source replica and target primary, we make sure uh, that uh, they're being replicated uh, from source uh, primary and uh, also check uh, that uh, there is no uh, replication delay. And then uh, source replica and target primary, uh, we do stop SQL thread uh, and then uh, stop updates uh, through replications. Next, uh, we get uh, the current position of source primary replication. So uh, if it's position-based, it's position, GTID-based, uh, it's GTID. And uh, here you can see position base is 100. This is the example. And source replica and target primary, uh, both uh, will bring to the same position that's 100 uh, with start slave SQL thread until. So now uh, source replica and target primary position are both 100. And then using start transaction with consistent snapshot, uh, we create transaction. And then uh, from MUH API perspective, uh, both have a same position that is 100. So they can get uh, the record at position 100. So once a transaction is created, a start slave SQL thread uh, using this, uh, we e restart the upgrade uh, of a replication and compare the data. So when you are done uh, up, to, up to this stage, and then between the source and target, you compare the data. And first, table, uh, make sure that there is a primary key in the table. Next, selection count to check if the number of rows match. Then finally, for the primary key, in the ascending and descending order, we obtain 500,000 records of the primary key and obtain hash values with concatenated columns by uh, SHA-2. If it's done by human being, and uh, it is awful lot of work, so we are automating this process. So up to here is the data comparison process. Finally, I'd like to talk about migration. So far, I've talked about uh, the preparation for the migration. And in this step, we will switch between the source and target MySQL. And we are talking about this step. So we put the application into the maintenance. That's the normal method. But other than that, at line, we can do the migration without my maintenance mode. That is uh, called online migration. That's what I like to talk about. In online migration, the service should be as uninterrupted as possible. That's the purpose. So without interruption, that is uh, good because we can work during daytime. That's a big benefit. And also we can avoid data loss. And we can simplify as much as possible. That's the purpose. Now, online migration, uh, there are two steps, prepare and switch over. First, prepare step, I will explain in the diagram. First, as you can see, we will start out with the situation with the application referring to the MySQL on the source through the source writer endpoint. And then through the MUH process, uh, we replicate what is in the source to the tar target. And then developer presses the prepare button. And what happens is, first, write the endpoint of the target. This is the DNS endpoint. And then uh, we can assign the C name to that and uh, uh, put this to the uh, source writer endpoint. This is done by the source writer. Uh, 
and then we will change, the developer will change the application setting and use the target endpoint. Although it looks like as if uh, the target endpoint is being used, but the target endpoint is looking at the source endpoint, meaning that uh, we are writing into the same source primary as before. So this is the prepare process. So after this, uh, finally, we are going to switch over. On the screen, uh, you press the switch over button, and then the process runs. First, we will set the source primary to uh, switch on the read only to prohibit writing. Next, this is a little bit unique. From the target to source, we start the replication because after the switch over, we make sure that there is, there is no data loss. So we are making sure that we can go back to the source. On the screen, after the switch over, just in case something happens, uh, the rollback is uh, available. The button for the rollback is available uh, in case of something happens. And on the source primary, uh, we will stop the connection from the application so that the uh, operation st stops. And then next uh, target primary will be read only off, and then it becomes writable. And finally, the target DNS endpoint record will be put back to the uh, original primary. And then this is the complete uh, endpoint of the um, switchover. So that was a very convenient online migration. But uh, there are some restrictions first. Between the source and target uh, uh, MySQL, we are using the same port number. It is because after the switch over, if the port number is different, and then uh, they can't communicate with each other. Second, the same user ACL uh, must exist. Uh, if the uh, username, host, password, privileges, these are different, and then it will cause problems such as after the switch over, and there may be miscommunication or inadequate authority after the switchover. Finally, uh, we have to disable the DNS cache on the upside because uh, uh, the switchover changes the DNS endpoint A record to target primary. But if the DNS cache on the upside is enabled, and then even after the switchover, it will continue to refer to the uh, source MySQL. That's why. So those are the restrictions. So that's my explanation on online migration. So I'd like to summarize. So today I took time to cover many grounds, but just by clicking the button on the screen, developers can easily and safely perform all of the migration operations I have described today. So that is uh, MAUH proto. As a result, developers can now safely perform MySQL migration without DBAs. And the DBAs can significantly reduce the migration-related workload and the communication costs. And my boss is very happy. So it was a happy ending. Thank you very much. That's all from myself. Harachi-san. Harachi-san, thank you very much. So we will start plus talk uh, and uh, we will delve into the session, focusing on areas that the interviewer uh, were interested in. And uh, we also would like to entertain uh, questions uh, from the audience. Please use the question symbol on the bottom right. So uh, Yoshihide Hayashi from Yahoo Japan uh, is the interviewer. Uh, this is uh, Hayashi. Yeah, I belong to my SQL team, and I'm in charge of uh, operation of my SQL and development of uh, migration tools uh, for the SQL and operation tools. Thank you very much. So Hayashi-san, uh, listening to the uh, session, uh, were there any questions? Yes, about the migration tool uh, you have developed, uh, but uh, how much of a manual migration did you 
conduct. Manual migration, well, before I joined, roughly, um, maybe per month, uh, there were like 10 or 20 of uh, the migration work uh, that were done. Okay, thank you. And regarding this tool, my SQL 5.0 to 8.0, uh, does it support uh, the migration from 5 to 8? 5. Oh, uh, if it's 5.7 to 8.0, that's possible. And if I may add, so after switch over, so that a rollback is possible from target to uh, source, uh, there'll be a reversed uh, replication. And then uh, if it's 8.0 and 5.7, uh, this uh, reverse uh, pattern uh, or reverse replication is possible. So 5.7 unit connection, uh, set names, uh, will be applied. And then with 5.7, collation uh, can be introduced uh, and then uh, make so that replication uh, will not come to a stop. Thank you very much. 5.6 to 8.0. So 5.6 to 5.7 and 5.7 to 8.0. So you need to go two stages? Yes. It does not support two stage um, migration, so you cannot roll back. So which means that dot six to dot seven, uh, you need to migrate using MUH and then uh, up to eight dot zero after that. Okay, thank you very much. And you used Go language. Why did you end up using Go language? Why did we use Go? Well, let's see, uh, we thought that it's a modern language and also the type uh, is defined and uh, it is well defined and uh, we were able to uh, use this reliable language. There were no particular reason. Okay. So injection related, high -ception. were there any items uh, that uh, were a problem, so the service side uh, will modify, or do you need to give up? Well, for inspection, if we were, uh, if there were hiccups, uh, let's see. Maybe we can go back to like page twenty of my slide deck, or maybe it's page forty. So migration steps, uh, maybe a little further. Yes, somewhere around here. So what are we doing in inspection? Primary key, if we don't have this primary key, then uh, yes, there will be warning, uh, but uh, we can make it so that it progress. So, uh, and uh, yes, InnoDB will have to be used. Uh, and the ACL, Yes, has to be there, uh, so target will not run. Uh, so on the source side, uh, it has to be modified in advance. And then super privilege, well, you can drop, and then uh, lowercase table names. Uh, so far, we have not faced this. Uh, yes, uh, this is in place, just in case, and full text search. So maybe two or three, yes, uh, we handled this. And uh, there was a, a request to DBA and uh, I went into target SQL and these target uh, enter the same value as source uh, and then relaunch. So that's what we did. And time zone is the same. Uh, reservation is now, well, re reserved words Some. I don't think we faced this. And GTID violation, I don't think uh, we've uh, faced this issue either. So did that suffice? Yes, thank you. Set variables, I have a question about set variables. Migration pattern, is there a mapping? like 5.6 to 5.7 and 5.7 to 5.8. So are there any patterns respectively? So that implementation, 
I do recall that, yes, uh, we did that implementation, uh, but I think I need to check. I don't have it from top of my head. Uh, but basically, these items on the slide, yes, uh, we're supporting all, all these uh, items only. So SQL mode, not create user. I think these are excluded, I believe, but I will check. So metadata, I have a question regarding metadata. For my SQL 8.0.19, int, zero fill. So for that metadata check, uh, there are cases where error is issued. Uh, so how do you deal with this? Zero fill, int zero fill is gone. I am not sure about that. Oh. So far, metadata check. As far as we've done metadata check, uh, there has not been any impact. Uh, so I do believe uh, there is no problem. OK, thank you very much. And also, start replication. I have another question here. So in switchover, the replication delay uh, is too big. It does not catch up. And in that case, uh, is, will you continue? Uh, yes, this a prod screen from MUH. What we can do, uh, well, actually, there is nothing that we can do from the screen, so which means that uh, with a data import, and then f within four days, uh, we have to do start replication. So that's the basic rule. So start replication. We can do this even without a delay. And then after that, the target side, uh, maybe there is, it goes down and there is a delay. And in that case, how do you deal with this situation? In that case, DBA uh, will get there and on the target. Multi-slit slave uh, will be set on the target side. Uh, and uh, that's how we deal with this issue. And data comparison, I have a question. So after uh, the start of the replication, when do you start data comparison? Do you have any recommended uh, timeline? So uh, data comparison, well, as uh, long as uh, the replication catches up, uh, you can do data comparison anytime. Uh, so it's up to the developer uh, to press the execution button of data comparison. OK, thank you. OK, I think uh, now it's time. So a final question, please. Thank you very much. So. From now on, um, uh, what is the, your next goal or target? Uh, something I want to add as a function. Let me see. Well, we will be starting operation. That's the phase we are. So we hope that uh, there will be a lot of users and we get a lot of feedback. So we want to take a look at them and uh, try to identify the issues and uh, solve those issues. And uh, from the interviewers, there were some questions about the um, chance of success or percentage of success, we want to make it as close as possible to 100% so that DBAs can reduce our workload and uh, developers uh, will feel easy to do the migration. Thank you.